Welcome back students, Mr. McCoy here. Today we're going to expand our knowledge of conditionals by adding on logical operators. So let's talk about the different kinds of operators we've learned so far. We learned first about assignment operators. That is your equals where you can put data into a variable or plus equals, times equals, those kinds of special assignment operators. We learned about arithmetic operators. That's just performing uh, arithmetic, math, addition, subtraction, modulus, that kind of stuff. In the if statement lesson we learned about relational or comparison operators. That's the double equals for checking equality, greater than or equal to, less than, that kind of stuff. Now we're going to learn about logical operators. So a logical operator um, can be included in a Boolean expression to combine other Boolean expressions. So if you want to check if multiple things are true or false, you can put them together. Here's a quick review of an if statement. Uh, we set num equal to 5, and then we check to see if num is greater than 0. If this evaluates as true, then we run the code inside of this block. In this case, this will evaluate as true, and we run this statement. But what if you wanted to adjust this to only run this statement if num was greater than 0 and no bigger than 10. Well, one way to do that would be to combine two different if statements, uh, put one inside the other, and we'll learn about nested ifs later on. But there's a better way you can do that. You can do that with the AND operator. So the AND operator is made by typing the ampersand, that's shift 7, type it twice, you get that double ampersand. So whenever you put that in between two Boolean comparison, two Boolean expressions, then we're requiring that both of those expressions be true for the entire thing to be true. If A equals 2 and B equals 4. Both of those have to be true in order for this to evaluate as true. In this case they are, and we'll run the code inside of the if block. Note that it doesn't just limit you to two conditions. You could add more on here and put in some extra conditions. You could put as many as you want. So going back to that first example where we want to say good number if num is greater than 0 but no more than 10, here's how you can get that done. We want num is more than 0 and no bigger than 10. So we could write that as if num greater than 0 and num is less than or equal to 10. Notice how this one doesn't have uh, an equal sign attached to it, and this one does. So if num was 0, then it's not greater than 0, and this would fail. But if num was 10, then this is OK. So no, uh, 10 is included, 0 is not included. But of course, you could change that if you wanted to include 0, do that. If you didn't want to include 10, you could do that. Another logical operator you need to know is the OR operator. So before we talk about how it works, let's talk about the symbol itself. You might not even know how to type this. It looks like just two vertical lines. Uh, the vertical line symbol is actually called the pipeline symbol. If you look at your keyboard, it's located above the enter key. If you hit uh, shift and backslash, you'll get the pipeline symbol. You need to type two of those to make the OR operator. Here's how that OR operator works. It checks to see if two conditions, or more conditions, to see if either statement is true. So with an AND, we needed both sides of it to be true. With an OR, we only need one side to be true. So let's take a look at this. If A equals 6, is that true? This side is not true, because A is 2. So that's false. Then we have an OR. B equals 4. Well, that's true. So we only needed one side of it to be true, so this code inside of here is going to run. Here's a common mistake that students make. What if you want to run some code if num equals 2 or 3? A lot of students will try to type this because it sounds good. If num equals 2 or 3. Well, that doesn't actually work. Here's what you have to do instead. 
if num equals 2 or num equals 3. Both sides of that logical operator have to be a full Boolean expression. So that's a Boolean expression and that's a Boolean expression. If you look up at this one, that is a Boolean expression, but this is not. That does not evaluate to true or false. That's just the number 3, uh, and therefore it can't be on one side of the OR statement. It's got to be a full Boolean expression. Here's other uh, bad examples and better versions of it. One more logical operator we're going to learn today is the negation operator. Looks like an exclamation point. And it basically just inverts true to false or inverts false to true. So you can think of it as a not symbol. In this example, if not a equals 2. So it's going to do this comparison. a equals 2. Is that true or false? Well, since a is 5, this evaluates as false. But then this negation operator flips that false to a true. And this will run. Feel free to look over these additional examples. Back in lesson 3 we talked about order of operations and that priority chart was a part of your notes. Uh, these logical operators do show up on that priority chart and they do have an order of operations. The not operation has a higher priority than the other logical operators and the AND operator has a higher priority than the OR operator. So there is a hierarchy there, uh, and statements inside parentheses will still be grouped together. Let's take a look at this complex example. There's a lot going on in this one. We have a couple OR statements. We have an AND statement. This AND statement is inside of parentheses. Um, so we're going to need to evaluate what's happening inside of these parentheses first and that'll get us either a true or a false and then we need to see if that's true or that's true or that's true only one of those has to be true so let's evaluate this on the inside first a is greater than or equal to one is that true yes but we need both sides of this AND to be true. B equals 6. Is that true? Yes. So both of those were true, so this entire thing evaluates to true. Let's take a look over here. A greater than 10. Is that true? No. B equals 4. Is that true? No. So what we really have is false or false or true. And since these are ORs and we only need one of them to be true, this true would mean that the entire if statement is true, and it will print it was true. Oops, this output should say it was true. I changed the slide a little. So if all of that made sense to you, then you're ready to go, and let's take a look at the lab. So now I have my Lab 8 document open. I've got BlueJ open to a new project called Lab 8 created two classes, Practice Problems and Nuts and Bolts. I have my Practice Problems code skeleton set up to import java.util.star and I have my scanner console object created so that I can accept user input from the keyboard. Let's check out problem one. Declare an integer variable called apples and set it equal to a value taken from the keyboard. Okay. We should always use a prompt. Since it's an integer value, I'm going to request that they put in a whole number. And it's integer variable called apples. Get user input from the console. And of course it's good practice to clear the keyboard buffer after getting an integer value. Write an if statement that will print that's positive if the value of apples is positive. So what makes a number positive? It just has to be greater than zero. So if apples is greater than zero, then we want to do something. What is that thing we want to do?
print that's positive. Let's run it and see. Okay, so whenever I put in a, a positive number, it worked. Let's run it again. This time I'll put in a negative number, and it didn't say anything. Um, just to clean up my formatting, I would rather if whenever I typed in a number, it appeared up here. So I need to change that print line to a print. Notice that I didn't need to put braces around this block inside of the if statement because it was a single line only. If I had multiple lines of code, then I would want to include the curly brackets around it, but not necessary if the if statement only has one line inside of it. Problem 2. Get a new value for apples from the keyboard and write an if statement that will print OMG, it's positive and even. If the value of apples is both positive and even. Okay, so now we're going to move into some more complicated Boolean logic. So we want to get a new value for apple. So we need to provide a prompt and collect data from the user. So I'm going to borrow this code, copy and paste. And as you've probably seen before in your programs, whenever I try to compile this, it says variable apples is already defined in the main method. It's because we declared apples up here, we can't redeclare it as a new variable down here. We can use apples again, but we can't redeclare it. So saying int isn't necessary. Compile. All right. So after we get that information, now we should probably also clear the keyboard buffer. And now we want to see if it is positive and even. Well, we already wrote some code for checking if it's positive. So let's borrow that also. If apples is greater than zero. But we also need it to be even. So and if apples is greater than zero and what? How do we check if a number is even? Well, there's a hint included in this document. It says the modulus operator will be useful here. So we have to do a little thinking. How could we use the modulus operator? What does the modulus operator do? Remember, it tells you the remainder after division. So it basically tells you how many are left over. So let's think about that cookies example. You have 10 cookies on your plate, and you have two people that you want to give them to. So if you divide up those cookies between the two people, how many are left over? Well, there would be zero left over. Or let's say you had 11 cookies and you divided them by those two people. How many do you have left over on the plate after you've divided them out? Well, each person's going to get five cookies and then you're going to have one left over. What if you had 12 cookies and you had two people? Well, each person's going to get six cookies and you have none left over. So notice how whenever you divide something between two people, you're either going to have nothing left over or you're going to have one left over. So we could use modulus to help us see if we have an even number because whenever you have an even number of something and you divide it between two groups, then you'll have none left over. So if I take my number of apples and I try to divide it into two groups, then how many will be left over if the number is even? There would be zero left over if it's even, so I can try to compare that to zero. If whenever I divide my apples between two groups, my remainder is zero, then I know I have an even number. So this is a good test for whether or not something is even. I could test to see if it's odd by checking to see if it's equal to one. Because if I have an odd number of apples, try to divide it into two groups, I'm going to have one left over. So let's leave that at zero. And then what's the message that I'm wanting to print? OMG. It's positive and even. All right, let's check it out. Compile, no errors, run. Enter a whole number. Let's go with uh, something positive. That's positive. Enter a whole number. This one is supposed to test if it's positive and even. So let me give it a positive even number. And 
it says that it's positive and even. Uh, now that's not enough testing. We should also test it uh, for other numbers to see if we get the correct output. If we put in something negative, it doesn't say anything. That's correct. Uh, if we put in a negative number here, we get nothing. That's, that's correct. What if we put in a positive odd number? We get nothing. That's correct. So it only gives us this message if we have a positive number and it's even. All right, that should be enough to get you started. Good luck. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.